Estrada. I'm an artist and a painter. And I want to show you how I set my environment in my studio so that I can have my creative thoughts at all time. First, let's go and visit my outdoor studio. Follow me. The first section of my studio is the acrylic section. In this section, I keep my acrylics, large acrylics on the floor and my small acrylics on my table. I try to keep all my materials and all my supplies on hand so I'm not looking for anything. On the other side of my studio, I have my one color silkscreen press. As you can see, it's only a one color and eventually I'll move up to a second color. Next, we have my oil section. I do my best to keep my oils and my acrylics completely separate. And that way my mind is set on either I'm working completely in acrylic or I'm working completely in oil. In this section, I keep my palette and my work area close together. In my oil section, I keep two types of workspaces, either flat on the floor or sometimes I put the works on the walls and oftentimes I just use a straight easel. And right behind my oil section, I have my mixed media on paper. So as you can see in my mixed media and paper, I created a section where I clip all my works on paper. I have all my materials, just like the other two sections. I keep all my supplies right in hand so I don't have to go out and look for any of my supplies while needed. I have all my paints. I use water-based spray paints and oil sticks and pastels as well as clears and lacquers to know that I have a variety of supplies and mediums that I can experiment while working on paper. So I don't have a traditional living room. What I decided to do, because my son is also an artist, we decided to use the living room as a workspace. So here we have all the printers, all the computers, and all the things we need to create prints or G clays or if we're doing all the graphics um, on computers. We also use the dry erase board to work out either brainstorming ideas or if we have concepts that we have to develop, it's easier to work them out on a dry erase board than on paper. This is an interior uh, studio space that I created with my son. And this is when we're working either late or if it begins to get really cold outside in the outdoor studio, we come inside and we have an area where we work on smaller works. If I need to work larger, I use the back wall and lay it out so that I can work larger while I'm still here. In this studio space, I also have a television. I have resources like books and a large shelf that has a lot of materials. One of the things about using space like this where I'm dividing my whole uh, living space into areas is that I have a wide variety of materials spread out throughout the house. 
Also in my bedroom, what I've done is I created a section in my room that sometimes it's hard for me to fall asleep or I need some quiet time. And here I do most of my mixed media or watercolors or sketches on paper. Because I have everything at my hand, I don't need to go outside and bring supplies either from the studio or from the indoor. I keep everything within my reach. Again, one of the most important things about being creative is to create environments that fit your habits. Lots of times people have their cell phones on hand or their computers in their bedrooms and that will waste a lot of their creative time by doing other things other than being creative. And finally, in my backyard, I have built some wood paneling and have them painted white. And this is the area where if I have a big project to do, such as a large canvas that's eight feet high by 24 feet wide, I have this area worked out. I also have other things that I do in the backyard as sculpture, special projects, or just take photography or do anything I need to do in an outdoor space. One of the things that separates the hobbyist from the professional is they take their craft very seriously. Um, in my home space, along with the living room, I also have gallery space for my own collection of art that I buy that inspires me or motivates me, but I also keep a lot of my own work on the wall so that I can do my own evaluation, my own critiques, and I have the, the visuals that I need to remind me every day that I got to get to work. Allowing me to have a multifaceted space in my studio and in my home, it allows me to take my career very serious in the form of a business. As you've seen in some of the footage that the computers and the artworks and the space to create art is very important because a lot of artists will sometimes get distracted by doing just a certain particular type of art, meaning they only have a studio that caters to large paintings and that's all they do. I, on the other hand, believe that it's an important uh, facet to have multi um, styles and multi of the same subject matter. That way it allows you to have large paintings, small paintings, big paintings, really big paintings so that if anything arises you're always prepared with the right pieces and the right sizes. And that's the way I have my studio set up. It's really important that you know your own habits as to how you function every day and what are the things you do every day. And I highly recommend that you keep something at hand. If you're always in a certain area, make sure that your environment correlates with your daily life at home. I hope you enjoyed this video and follow me on Instagram at Juan D. Estrada Art or go to my website at juandanielestrada.com to see more of my work. Have a blessed day.